Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, for those of you who are new here, my name is Oindrila Ghosh. I am a third year PhD student in environmental engineering at UMBC. There are several other things other than my work which interest me. And when I think about it, sometimes I think I, think I feel uh, that I'm quite fickle, but um, but then when I look at my days or weeks, it's quite interesting how many thoughts cross my mind. Um, and I think like everything else at work, these thoughts need documentation and expression. Today I'm starting something new, a video blog series. And I know I have put up some music videos and uh, art process videos before on my channel, but I was never really very satisfied with them because I didn't know where I was going. Uh, I didn't have a very substantial plan of what I wanted to do with them. And I guess it didn't really show the full me. <laughs> so I wish to confess that starting this has taken a lot of planning and a lot of cuts because I was not sure and I guess I'm still not very sure uh, whether I'll be able to be very consistent with uh, what I'm doing. Um, that is something that doing a PhD has taught me, you know, that no matter which creative endeavor you are in, and by creative endeavor, I do not exclude research, um, consistency is key. But in order to be consistent, you have to have a plan. You want to know where you are going, what you want to do with your plans. The other thing that I have realized about myself is that uh, even though I really enjoy writing down my thoughts, uh, when it comes to knowing other people's perspective on things, which is something very exciting to me, I always prefer to watch a video of the person talking or actually hear the person talking instead of uh, read an article. And that's not something I'm very proud of about myself. I definitely think I should read more and I want to change that about myself. But then for now, it's what it is. And uh, yeah, anyway, this series is going to be a documentation of these little things that I think about or do. And I hope you guys enjoy it as much as they engage me. Uh, and if you really like what you see, then you can always show your support by subscribing to the channel. With that little introduction to the new venture, I guess we can move to the first vlog of the series. Hope you guys enjoy it. After almost a year of staying home due to the pandemic, one of my school friends visited us in Baltimore from Chicago this year in June. The morning after her arrival, we made a trip to the Fort McHenry National Monument. The one-liner motivation to visit this historical shrine? Fort McHenry played a major role in the War of 1812 by successfully defending the Baltimore Harbor from an attack by the British Navy from the Chesapeake Bay. Also, the national anthem of the United States was written here. It is usually a ritual of our university to bring the fresh grad students every year to Fort McHenry, but I had missed the university trip in my first year and I was visiting this for the first time just like my friend. After the American Revolution between 1775 and 83, the War of 1812 was a second war of independence for America. The war happened because the British were attempting to restrict US trade and compelling American seamen to join the Royal Navy while America was desiring to expand its territories. 
The United States suffered many costly defeats at the hands of the British, Canadian and Native American troops over the course of the War of 1812, including the capture and burning of the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. But in New York, Baltimore, and New Orleans, the American troops were able to repulse British invasions. Fort McHenry successfully defended the Baltimore Harbor from an attack by the British Navy from the Chesapeake Bay in September 1814. On the morning of September 14, 1814, an American garrison flag 30 by 42 feet was hoisted, signaling the American victory over the British in the Battle of Baltimore. Sir Francis Scott Key was inspired by this flag to write the poem Defense of Fort McHenry that later became known as the Star Spangled Banner, the American National Anthem. Right before entering the fort, this plaque right here read that during the First World War, the fort served as a surgical center or a hospital from 1917 to 23 that housed wounded French soldiers from the battlefields. As you walk towards the entrance of the fort, you see the cannons facing the Chesapeake Bay on your left. This plaque read, The entrance to the fort was apparently the weakest and most vulnerable points open to British land attack. Most plaques across the fort's premises had these super cool hand-drawn watercolor illustrations of the history of the place, just like this one. Right at the entrance of the fort, we met this kid and his parents He was completing the Fort McHenry Junior Ranger program. He promised the men guarding the gate of the fort that he would come and join them for work very soon. It's all right. Looks like you put in a lot of work already, so please, we'll we'll let you enjoy the park today. But you got to come back and work with us, okay? The five buildings you see here are the five guarding walls of the fort that gives it the shape of a pentagonal star when viewed from top. The first of the five buildings exhibited the role of the fort in the Civil War of the 1860s. A model of a bed used by the soldiers kept on the far end of the room with a desk in front and a metal kettle kept on a heating tray. My friend remembered that she used to have one such desk back at home. It had a lid that would open into the gut of the desk where she could keep her stuff. The writ of habeas corpus directs a person, government or official to produce the prisoner and justify the prisoner's detention. Okay.
शीशे बोतल दूधर बोतल संगे किसर बोतल उंडी We grabbed some lunch at a French Mediterranean tavern in downtown Baltimore called Mary Louise Bistro. I had been to this place only once before. One of my friends from work introduced me to the place, and I had instantly fallen in love with the delicious food and the aesthetics of the ambience. We ordered one of my favorites, the French onion soup, for our starters. The simplicity of this dish is probably why it is such a favorite of mine. Minced onions in a broth with thick slice of bread at the base and a generous helping of cheese dripping but hardened with a firm bake on the walls of the porcelain bowl. After a belly full of main course and dessert, we were headed towards the Baltimore Harbor. Driving through an old city like Baltimore has its own perks. I agree the traffic can be peevish but looking at the old buildings merge with the newer ones and the interruption of sudden graffiti walls is so charming Baltimore Inner Harbor is a stretch of paved pathway that links the Chesapeake Bay to the rest of the city After a hard and rusty week of work one can easily uncoil by taking a long stroll by the waters gazing at the baltimore skyline followed by a delicious seafood platter for dinner or just get lost on one of the benches up on the federal hill Today we were taking a cruise across the waters and going up to the Keys Bridge. The Baltimore region was home to Native Americans before the European colonization that started in 1492 after Christopher Columbus found the American landmass. In 1706 The port of Baltimore was established to support the tobacco trade with Europe by the colonists from the province of Maryland. The town of Baltimore was established in 1729.
As the cruise took us all the way to the Keys Bridge, we crossed the famous Domino Sugar Refinery and its iconic red neon sign of Baltimore, which is the second largest sugar refinery in the US. The red neon Domino Sugar sign that has been a significant part of the Baltimore skyline for almost 70 years now was installed in 1951. Only recently in March this year, the neon lights were switched off. A new project is on the go to replace it with more energy efficient LED lights. Apparently, the switch to LEDs will save 33,000 kilowatt hour energy every year and prevent more than 23 tons of carbon dioxide from being emitted annually. We also caught a glimpse of the beautiful lawns surrounding Fort McHenry from the cruise. Perhaps this is what it looked like from out in the bay for the British troops that attacked Baltimore all those years back. That night, we had an Italian dinner at a homey Sicilian cafe called Cafe Gia Ristorante. We started with some grilled octopus served over Italian potatoes, red onions and parsley drizzled with lemon olive oil. Oniruddha ordered the ricotta nocci, while my friend and I ordered an entree which was that day special grilled Australian sea bass served with roasted potatoes and a spicy sweet mango salsa. It is perhaps one of the best Italian foods I have ever tasted. Also, I almost never let go of the opportunity to hold on to a nice glass of red sangria if I ever have the chance. Today was no different. I learned later from Oniruddha that Italian cuisine much like Indian cuisine and much unlike American cuisine, is very different in different parts of the country. Baltimore becomes an interesting city at night, a colorful, noisy little humdrum affair with secrets in its several deep little pockets. It started drizzling again. 